in chapter 7, we have two modules. In module 1, we have parallel vector fields and a very important curvature called Gaussian curvature of the surface. Parallel vector field resembles with the geodesic, which was done in the previous chapter. So, let us start with parallel vector field in the first section and afterwards in the second section, we shall find the Gaussian curvature of the surface. So, let us consider a surface is immersed in Euclidean space E 3 and a curve C on S is given by the equation u alpha equals to u alpha s. So, the equation is represented by the parameter s that is the arc length and coefficient of first fundamental form is a alpha beta. If a alpha is a surface vector defined along C, then the intrinsic derivative of A alpha along C is given by del A alpha del S equals to A alpha comma gamma d u gamma d S, where alpha and gamma are the surface indexes and it is running from 1 and 2. Now, this expression will come to d a alpha d s plus a beta alpha beta gamma d u gamma d s. This is coming from the covariant differentiation of the vector a alpha. Now, let us consider del a alpha del s equal to 0. That means, intrinsic derivative of a alpha with respect to s is equal to 0. That means, d a alpha d s plus a beta gamma alpha beta gamma d u gamma d s equal to 0. Now, if a alpha is taken as unit vector tangent to some point, then a alpha can be written as d u alpha d s and that we have expressed earlier as lambda alpha. So, now if we replace a alpha by lambda alpha, then the expression 1 will reduces to d 2 u alpha d s 2 plus gamma alpha beta gamma d u beta d s d u gamma d s equal to 0. Which can be expressed in the form d u alpha d s comma beta d u beta d s equal to 0. So, again this equation is represented in the form of covariant differentiation. So, we can state the following theorem that the vector obtained by the parallel propagation of the tangent vector to a geodesic always remains tangent to geodesic, because del a alpha del s equal to 0 gives us the parallel vector field. That means, the tangent vector is parallelly propagated along the geodesic.
Now, we introduce a new curvature of surface which is known as Gaussian curvature or the total curvature of the surface. On a surface, we have first fundamental form d a square equal to a alpha beta d u alpha d u beta. The Riemannian curvature tensor is given by with this expression. Earlier we have obtained the Riemann curvature tensor for a space which is written in the form of R H i j k because i j k h these are the space index alpha beta gamma delta are the surface indices. So, here we are expressing this Riemann curvature tensor for a surface and it takes the form this one r alpha beta gamma delta equals to del del u gamma gamma alpha delta minus del del u delta gamma alpha beta gamma plus gamma rho beta delta gamma alpha delta gamma minus gamma rho beta gamma gamma alpha gamma delta, where this gamma alpha beta delta etcetera are the Christopher symbols of second kind. Now, from this r alpha beta gamma delta which is a tensor of type 1 3, we can get the associated tensor of type 0 4 by the inner product with a rho alpha. So, a rho alpha r alpha beta gamma delta is equal to r dash rho beta gamma delta. So, it is a 0 4 tensor and rho beta gamma delta all are varying from 1 and 2. Now, by properties of Riemann curvature tensor, we have r dash alpha alpha gamma delta equals to 0 equals to r dash alpha beta gamma gamma, because if the first two indices are equal, the Riemann curvature tensor vanishes. So, this relations come. The only non vanishing components of the Riemannian tensors are R dash 1 2 1 2 or it is negative. So, only these two Riemann curvature tensors will not equal to 0, others will be equal to 0. So, Gauss has defined curvature of surface by it is denoted by capital K that is equal to R dash 1 to 1 to by A, where A is the determinant of A alpha beta which should not be equal to 0. So, this relation number 2 is the definition of the Gaussian curvature. It is also named total curvature of a surface.
in general the above expression can be written as r dash alpha beta gamma delta equals to k epsilon alpha beta epsilon gamma delta. So, it is in permutation tensors we can express this r dash alpha beta gamma delta in the following way, where, where epsilon alpha beta is equal to root a e alpha beta and epsilon upper alpha beta equals to 1 by root a e upper alpha beta, where e alpha beta and e upper alpha beta are the E system which was defined earlier and epsilon alpha beta are the permutation tensors. Now, if we take the inner product with epsilon alpha beta, epsilon gamma delta in both sides, we are getting that epsilon alpha beta, epsilon gamma delta r dash alpha beta gamma delta equals to k because if we just calculate this index in the right hand side, we are getting this 4 k. Therefore, we have k equals to 1 fourth of epsilon alpha beta epsilon gamma delta r dash alpha beta gamma delta. Now, from the above equation, we can say that k is an invariant. Now, multiplying both sides again by a alpha delta that is the contravariant part a alpha delta a beta gamma we get this relation. Now, the left hand side is coming to a beta gamma r beta gamma and in the right hand side we are getting by applying the definition of epsilon alpha beta k a e alpha beta e gamma delta a alpha delta a beta gamma. Now, again in the left hand side by the operation of a beta gamma r beta gamma it is coming to r which is the scalar curvature of the surface and in the right hand side we are getting minus 2 k by a that is equals to minus 2 k. So, this is a very important relation between the Gaussian curvature of the surface and the scalar curvature of the surface. That means, the Gaussian curvature is equal to minus r by 2, where r is the scalar curvature of the surface. Now, let us see about the orthogonal curvilinear coordinate system. And for orthogonal curvilinear coordinate system, the Gaussian curvature is coming to this form minus 1 by 2 root a del del u 1, 1 by root a del a 2 2 by del u 1 plus del del u 2, 1 by root a del a 1 1 del u 2. Now, how this one is coming? Because for orthogonal curvilinear coordinate system, we have a 1 2 equals to 0. Now, using the formula r dash 1 2 1 2, if we take the inner product with the contravariant part of the fundamental metric tensor for surface with the Riemann curvature tensor of 1 3, we can get the value of 
the Gaussian curvature k as this one. Now, which is a very essential formula to find the Gaussian curvature for orthogonal curvilinear coordinate system. With the help of this formula, we can easily find the Gaussian curvature of a surface if their curvilinear coordinate system is orthogonal. Now, let us see how we can calculate this Gaussian curvature. For a sphere of radius r with parametric equation x 1 equal to r cos u cos v, x 2 equal to r cos u sin v, x 3 equal to r sin v, we are going to find the Gaussian curvature. Now, we know the definition of A alpha beta from the previous chapter. It is the product of two partial derivatives. So, calculating A 1 2, we get that it is coming to 0. As A 1 2 is equal to 0, that means the curvilinear coordinate system is orthogonal. So, we can apply the previous formula to obtain the Gaussian curvature. Now, we find the A 1 1. The value of A 1 1, if we calculate by this expression, we are getting this is equal to r square. A 2 2 is coming to r square cos square u. And the value of A, which is the determinant of A i j, that means it is a 2 cross 2 determinant A 1 1, A 1 2, A 2 1, A 2 2. The value is coming r to the power 4 cos square u and this is not equal to 0 obviously. So, if we put the values in the formula of that k, we are getting this form. Now, if we just calculate the partial derivatives and putting the values, we are getting this one and after simplifying, we get the value of k equals to 1 by r square. That means, the Gaussian curvature is equal to 1 by r square. where r is the radius of the sphere. So, in this way we can calculate the Gaussian curvature if the coordinate system is orthogonal, but if the coordinate system is not orthogonal then we can find the Gaussian curvature by its definition that is r dash 1 2 1 2 by a. So, we have to calculate the r dash 1 to 1 to and from that expression we can find the value of Gaussian curvature. So, in the previous two sections of chapter 7 module 1, we have learned about the parallel vector fields on a surface and a very important curvature named Gaussian curvature of a surface. We have seen the relation between the Gaussian curvature and the scalar curvature of a surface. And we have also obtained the formula to find the Gaussian curvature 
if the curvilinear coordinate system is orthogonal. Now, in section 3, we shall study a new type of surface is called developable surface. It is very interesting to see here that how Gaussian curvature can be used to determine whether the surface is developable or not. So, in section 3 of module 1 of chapter 7, we shall learn about developable surface. Now, before coming to the developable surface, let us see the isometry between two surfaces. What is the isometry between the two surfaces? Consider the two surfaces given by S 1 equal to y 1 equal to u 1 cos u 2, y 2 equals to u 1 sin u 2, y 3 equals to a cos hyperbolic inverse u 2 by a, which is also a surface of revolution. This surface is a surface of revolution and it is d s n square, the first fundamental form if we calculate, you can easily calculate this one, you get this expression u 1 square by u 1 square minus s square d u 1 square plus u 1 square d u 2 square. Now, if we consider another surface that is y 1 equal to v 1 cos v 2 y 2 equals to v 1 sin v 2 and y 3 equals to a v 2, which is a helicoid. So, d s 2 square that is the first fundamental form for helicoid can be calculated as this one d v 1 square plus a square plus v 1 square d v 2 square. Now, if we consider v 1 equals to square root of u 1 square minus a square and v 2 equals to u 2, then the two surfaces have the same metric. So, we can say that if two surfaces S 1 and S 2 be such that there exists a coordinate system with respect to which the line element on S 1 and S 2 are characterized by the same metric, then they are said to be isometric. So, we can say that surface of revolution and the helicoid are isometric surfaces. the transformation of the parameters is called isometry. Now, we come to the definition of developable surface. A surface which is isometric to the Euclidean plane E 2 is called a developable surface or simply a developable. So, when a surface is isometric to the Euclidean plane E 2, it is called a developable surface. For example, a cylinder cone are the developable surfaces, because for cylinder we can easily transform it into Euclidean plane E 2. For cone also we can transform it into Euclidean plane E 2 by giving some suitable transformation. But torus is not a developable surface. Now, for E 2 we have r dash 1 to 1 to equal to 0 as it is a flat surface. 
the Riemann curvature tensor of type 0 4 is equal to 0. And therefore, the Gaussian curvature is also equal to 0. The surface with Gaussian curvature 0 are isometric with E 2 and so they are developable surface. So, this is an important idea that if we obtain that Gaussian curvature is coming to 0, then the surface will be a developable surface. So, we can assert that if k equal to 0 for any surface, then it is developable. Now, let us check whether this given surface is developable or not. Y 1 is given as a function of u 1, y 2 is also a function of u 1 and y 3 is equal to u 2. This is an arbitrary surface. So, we are checking that whether it is developable or not. Now, from the definition of A alpha beta, it is del x i del u alpha del x i del u beta, where alpha beta is running from 1 to and i is running from 1 to 3. We can find that A 1 to is equal to 0. If we calculate this one, we find that A 1 to equal to 0. That means, the curvilinear coordinate system is orthogonal. If we find A 1 1, this is coming to this expression. And if we find A 2 2, it is coming equal to 1. So, if we calculate the value of A, that is the determinant of A alpha beta, we are getting this expression. Where f dash denote the derivative of the function with respect to u 1. Now, as a 1 2 equal to 0, that means the curvilinear coordinate system is orthogonal, we apply the formula for Gaussian curvature and putting the values, we calculate this one and after calculating we get this one equals to 0. So, for this surface the Gaussian curvature is 0, that means the surface is developable. So, for finding whether the surface is developable or not, we have to find the Gaussian curvature. If it becomes 0, then the surface is developable, otherwise it is not. In module 1 of chapter 7, we have learnt three things. In the first section, we have learnt about the parallel vector fields on a surface. In section 2, we have learnt the definition of Gaussian curvature and how it is related to scalar curvature. And in section 3, we have defined the concept of isometry between two surfaces and the definition of developable surface. We have seen that under what condition a surface will be developable surface and for a surface to be developable, the Gaussian curvature should vanish. So, with this we end the module 1 of chapter 7.